Hey, Craig, how are you? I'm good. Nice shirt. Thank you. Um, I definitely didn't throw it on in a rush going, oh, shit, I need to wear a shirt for this. Uh, <laughs> no one no should ever apologize for having uh, Jay and Silent Bob on yeah. the chest. Oh, trust me, I've had to apologize for like again, <laughs> most of my career. Um, but, you know, um, but one of the times I spoke to him, it was funny to go. So I write about the Oscar season, but I also like your movies. And he just like cocked his head going, you're not a very popular writer, are you? I was, like, <laughs> I was on Kevin's uh, podcast once and it was it was uh, it was hilarious. It was I funny. remember. Oh, he, he blew you up pretty well. Uh, <laughs> he, he's, he's a good fan for anything he likes. Um, he is, he is. Speaking of, it's got to be interesting. Obviously, you know, made a, made several movies in your life, but I'm sure you also probably went to go see Coming to America just as a person who went to go see movies because everybody on the planet went to go see that movie when it came oh, out. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then you know, maybe hadn't thought about it for, for a while. Maybe think about it when you start working with Eddie going, oh shit, he's in that, you know. But at a certain point when discussions start about like, oh, maybe you'll be the one to, to make this movie happen. How much of it is excitement and how much of it is, is nervousness of like, oh, I can't mess this up. Yeah, I remember, uh, I remember when it came up for me to do Coming to America because Eddie, Eddie asked me about it. Yeah. And, um, I of course got really excited, you know. Um, I have that that wonderful uh, moment when you're at home, and now like you, you you know the possibility of a movie is happening, and I'm pacing around my my apartment, I'm listening to music, and I'm getting all psyched up, and then it kind of like then then the the, the high comes down, and you realize like oh wait a minute, yeah, <laughs> this is kind of a golden egg here that you can totally drop. Yeah. And even if you carry that golden egg, you still are probably going to have to deal with a lot of people second guessing, a lot of people uh, saying like, uh, you know, that, that why are you doing this? You know, don't ruin something that's perfect. And, and so I kind of felt for the first time in my career, like, well, wait a minute, you know, I've now been doing this for a while. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had to kind of go into areas of like remake territory with Footloose and, and I've, I think I'm strong enough to to handle this, and I think that I love the original movie so much that I I know what can probably be referenced and what we could probably leave out. Yeah. You know, um, it was also very important to me that it you know be an an emotional movie as well as being funny, and meaning like I just want people to be touched by it as well because so many people have such a, a soft spot for coming to America in their hearts you know it's 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 a movie that my it was my grandmother's favorite movie you know um it it it, it, it touches into all ages all races everybody around the world loved the first one so we're not here to you know replace that we're here to celebrate that and we hope that the movie uh, provides that that celebration sure and i think it's 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 such a weird thing when you think about remakes because if you're the person paying for a movie, you know, on the studio side, it's the easiest thing in the world because we already did it once. Just do it again. You know, we, right. we know how to sell it. We know how it was done right. Just do it. But for the filmmaker, it's, but yeah, we, if we do the exact same thing, no one's going to like it. If we do something yeah. wildly different, no one's going to like it. There's this really weird middle ground. Like you said, your grandmother's favorite movie coming to America. Like my mom, one of her favorite movies is yours, mine and ours. She mm. hates the new one because you know, she well, like, like, but, but I think that that's what's interesting about about remakes versus sequels. And this is my first yeah. sequel. You know, I've never done a sequel before. But you know, to have these conversations with our with our design team, like, well, wait a minute, what's the throne room going to look like? Is it going to look like the same throne room back in 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 the original Coming to America? Because that seemed kind of very like late eighties. Well, yeah, you so, have the you have a weird ability to to do both. You can be like, I want everyone to recognize what we did, but time has passed how much do we want to allow time to pass we can we can turn the dial as much or as little as we want whatever well, the, and that's the fun that's the real fun i mean like I, I i always bring up the story but my favorite costume when my first call actually when i was going to do coming to america was to ruth carter yeah it, sure. it, it was the first person i called because i i you know we we really wanted ruth and i was like ruth how are we going to do this how do you do a movie that's new that's going to incorporate your artistry, but still we're holding to, you know, a, a movie that nobody wants to change. Right. And, uh, and, and she had talked to, we talked about this one outfit where it, that James Earl Jones wore in the first one that was like a lion. Yes. Real my lion. favorite costume in the movie. 
right? It's mine too, right? Everybody loves that. Okay, now you're now it's 2000, you know, now it's 2019. It doesn't it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't quite work. You know, Akeem's got daughters, and it's like so. I was like, you know what'd be cool is like, what if there was like a big golden emulet of a lion's head? Yeah. That, that kind of fastened in the same place where that lion's head was. And then the cape is held on. I, and I remember telling her, I was like, I want you to design something that looks so cool that Jay-Z is calling you up going like, I got to have that lion, bro, yeah. you know, with the cape. Right. So, but that's the example of what I mean. It's like, well, what can we build off of the original and, and interpret into something contemporary? Oh, yeah. And I think that's, that's something that the movie does do well. Because I think what you said with, you know, everyone has such a, a fond memory and everyone takes something sort of unique from it and then to get them you know any sequel that takes oh you know doesn't come out two years later you always run the risk of people going well i wanted this and i got that so you have to kind right. of play to how can i how can i subvert expectations but also get you to the place that you know you want to be because what did you like about the first movie you right. liked that it was funny you liked that there was a heart to it and you like that Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall played a million characters. Like those are like some of the hallmarks. How can we hit that? I'll tell you an example of like one thing that that I added that I was I, I felt worked was, um, okay, uh, we are presenting a a a princess from Nextoria to mm-hmm. Akeem's son. In the first movie, Paul Bates came forward as Oha and saying she's your queen, yeah. right? He could come forward and sing She's Your Queen again. Or maybe we could do something different. You know, maybe we could do something. So, so there's something fun about like having Oha come out. He inhales and people are thinking like, here comes She's Your Queen. Yeah. But then Princess Get Out, Get Off comes out. And you're like, whoa, that's equally as fun and funny. So it's that, that there's something about like the, the original source material that, that, that helps even tee up new comedy or new, new experiences. Oh yeah, just I mean yeah, or or just re- thinking that like the guys in the barbershop would never age, you know. That's yeah. a. You know, I love hearing that? that. I love hearing that criticism. It's my favorite yeah. criticism. Like, shouldn't they be dead right now? It's like, of course they should be dead right now. But, but they will always be this old. They will always. If if we do a Coming to America uh, three, they're. I swear to God, they're not going to age. They're just going to be a little bit older. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, I. It's one of those things where like rationally it should be annoying. Like, wait, come on, that makes no sense. But there's something about wanting them there they're like no it's totally fine because it it wouldn't feel like that movie and you want them to show up you know three times more than they should just because you need that like two minute riff of just okay these people are the core of what makes this you know a classic comedy why would we not have it i couldn't agree with you more yeah um and then just i'm I'm, once you decide once like you said eddie's like are you interested in this and you and you decide how helpful it is, is it that you have a working relationship with him? Because I'm sure he has ideas about what he wants to do in the movie. You have I, ideas, you know, the, the people yeah, who are paying for it have ideas. To be able to, to, you know, come to the compromise without, you know, making him feel like he's not a part of it, but also, you know, being the director as opposed to just, you know, doing a favor. I think that that it was the probably one of the main reasons that, that we thought that we could do it because we had just done it, you know? Yeah. Um, and everybody's got their process, you know. Eddie Eddie has a a a, a process to his craft, and um, I learned how to make a set, you know, comfortable for people to do what they do. And so I think that uh, not only were we making Coming to America, but we were also like, you know, publicizing and doing the award circuit on on Dolomite is my name. Yeah. So it was just like a very long shoot where Eddie and I and Eddie's whole team and myself were, were making these two movies back to back. And I've never done movies back to back. And now I get to say that I've done them with Eddie Murphy. And, and, yeah. and so it, it, it was, it was definitely uh, uh, trying, but uh, we, we actually managed to have fun making this movie. Oh, yeah. Let's do two big projects that require a ton of production design, but not the world's biggest budget. And do them back to back, and have a huge movie star who who like and promote things at the same time. I'm, I'm glad you bring that up because I'm very proud of the budget that we had on this movie and the size that we pulled off with yeah. with the movie. You know, and a lot of that's really uh, you know uh, got to give it up to Jeff Sage, who was a fantastic production designer on on Coming to America, 
and to Ruth Carter, who I think her costumes are just, I mean, right. especially her costumes going from Dolomite is my name into coming to America. She's just so talented, so gifted. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think that's it's interesting also that, you know, over the years where, you know, hypothetically this movie could have been made, it would have been probably at a, at a price point that's way higher and it would have been a ton of cooks in the kitchen and it would have been, yeah. you know, a carbon copy and it, I'm, and it wouldn't have been as fun. Probably even just that, for the people on set. I think that we lucked out that it's more than 30 years later because yeah. you can you can now explore what what the, the people who saw Coming to America when they were young, like myself, like I tell people, I was a teenager when I saw Coming to America, but now I have teenagers, you know, I'm a parent and, you know, my teens watched my movie of Coming to America. And, and if you had a sequel come out like just a few years later after the first movie, I don't know if you could really explore the themes that we're exploring. No, it would have it would have had to be, why is he going back to America? Oh, there's a thing. And it would have, right. and it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been, it would have felt like, okay, the first one was successful. And and listen, they can be good too, but yeah, I'm sure, especially even for Eddie, who, you know, is pretty selective about what he wants to do, being in a whole other point of his life makes it an interesting character. You know, you can, you, can, you can get to play the character you played. You can also kind of play James Earl Jones. You can also kind of play a whole new character. Yeah. It's the fuller meal. And especially at this point in his career, I'm sure he, you know, if it's not that, can just as soon stay home with his, you know, gigantic well, family and money. <laughs> it's, it's hard because, you know, you're, you're constantly thinking like, well, what's funny? What's funny? What's funny? Yeah. You know, and, you're, and, and so much of what you're dealing with is, is, is those, those, those comedy setups, but really uh, I kind of like was gravitating uh, to, to what you're talking about. It's like, well, but in the first movie, everybody's really rooting for Akeem, you yeah. know, because his, his, he's very pure in his intention. He wants to find true love. He, he, he wants to find somebody that he connects with. Well, in this movie, we get to have fun with the fact that Akeem is, is at times maybe letting us down because he's not, you know, we're, uh, you know, he's, he's got to be dealing with, with tradition and now ruling a nation and, 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 and where, where is he kind of like dropping some of the ideals that we had, but it's, it's a little bit more accessible to people like me where it's like, huh, well, I remember when I was younger and I had all right. these ideals and now they've kind of ebbed a little bit, but now my teenagers are just much more vocal about, about today's contemporary issues and, and ultimately, what we got to do is shut up and listen to our kids a little bit more, you know, right. and, and maybe remember who we are, you know, yeah. and I think that's a, that's a more special story to, to, to mine with coming yeah. to America. Oh, yeah, because you, you need to, you need to find a way to, to have him have his, like, you know, come to Jesus moment, per se, especially when you remember that the first movie is based on his father going, oh, wait, fuck it, I'm in charge, I can make the rules, never mind, we, we can do this, and, you know, if the, if he remembered that five minutes in, it's a very short movie. You need to have him have a have a bit of a journey and realize, oh, you know, oh, that's what my dad did for me. I can do that for my child, but also I can, you know, I can come to this in a different way. I don't have right. to just you know. so right. I, I think there was a soft touch there that I appreciated. I, it was it was important. I don't know how much you can kind of give up about like what you know about the movie. You'll have to you'll have to make this decision later. Oh, yeah. But I was sitting. We were we were. Uh, we were filming, we were well into production and coming to America was on TV in my hotel room. And I was like, well, I've seen this so many times, but you know, why not just while I'm, while I'm eating my dinner, I'll watch coming to America. And then I got to the, to the end with the queen talking to Akeem about like, do you, do you love her? Then go to her. And I was like, that's, that's what we need in our movie. It's like everybody, so much of what these movies are about, like if you look at Star Wars and, and, and Lord of the Rings, it's so father-based, you know, yeah. it's so much about like, well, my father put this into me and I need to continue on the ways of my father. But ultimately in the first one, a, a woman brought reason to the madness, the queen, yeah. you know, and I felt like, oh, that's the, that would be such a great way to, for, for us to, to return to reason by, by way of him remembering his mother. Perfect. Yeah, well said. And a, and a perfect place to, to wrap this up. Congratulations on this. And I, uh, I really hope it's also not the last time you two work together because I think you guys bring out the best in each other. Uh, I love working with Eddie and I love working with Arsenio. I hope I could do a movie with him again yeah. too. Yes, please. <laughs> Thanks, great you so much for doing it.
Likewise. Thank you.